We are going to keep you on your toes this morning, so be ready. No. We are so glad that you're here to worship with us. We're going to start with a song this morning. We have some extra singers that are going to lend their talents with us. Um, we're going to start with Here I Am to Worship, so let's stand together and praise God. different. We wanted to get you started with a song this morning. I have a couple of quick announcements for you. If you have children here who would like to go and worship on their own during the sermon, they can do so um, behind that curtain. We have somebody over there. They can praise and worship in here if they would like to. I don't mind if they do their own thing during the sermon, but some people would rather have them or families would rather have them do that behind the curtain in the room. We have things for them. And also there is a reminder that if you took an angel off the angel tree, angel tree gifts are due back by December 8th. You can drop them off here when you come into the journey service, or you can drop them off in the education building under that tree on December 8th. And also this Wednesday night at six o'clock, we have our Thanksgiving Eve service. And that begins at six o'clock. We have a little worship service. We also serve Holy Communion. And then after that, we invite you for pancakes for supper. And that is open to everyone. So please come and join us for that. And we also are encouraging you, if you would like to volunteer for a community Christmas party, 
or for Christmas Tree Santas. Those are both happening in December. You can check out our website, the Facebook page, or call the, the church office for more information. And now, my friends, I invite Chris Clark forward for our prayer. Good morning. Please join me in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and praise you. Just like the song before that we just sang, you alone are worthy of honor and praise and glory, Lord. And we just want to take some time to say thank you so much for our friends and for our family, for this church and the community we find ourselves in. Lord, we owe all to you. We thank you and praise you always, Lord, for how you have blessed us so mightily. And in this time of Thanksgiving, Father, we just pray that you would please keep our hearts in that mode of Thanksgiving and help us to reach out to those less fortunate and to reach out to our community and to our neighbors. And Father, you would help us and anoint us with that task at hand, Lord, that we may be your hands and feet, that you would speak through us, Lord, and anoint us for that task. We thank you and praise your holy name for all that you do, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have some new songs that we want you to learn with us. Um, so let's stand together and we're going to praise some more. Letting go of every single dream, I lay each one down at your feet.
We're just going to keep rolling. You ready? Okay, mm -hmm. good. word of prayer. Good and gracious God, we are so thankful that you never stop fighting for us because we can get weak and we can be tired and weary, but you are right there by our side in our weakest moment, in our most difficult of situations. You are there. And so we praise you with hearts full of thanksgiving, hearts full of gratitude, and we trust in you, and we worship you. And in this moment, God, we ask that you just empty us out and fill us with that trusting spirit and remind us that you fill us with that fighting spirit. 
And in this moment, as we've come into this place, may our eyes be open to see something new and hear something new. And Lord, I ask that you hide me behind your cross and wrap your wings around me, heavenly dove. I'm humbled to be your servant. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I don't know about you, but I am completely amazed that the month of November has flown by and that we are getting ready to start the Advent season. And over the past month, I told you we were going to talk about Thanksgiving and being grateful and being thankful. And we have talked about being thankful in all things. And we have talked about Thanksgiving being a verb, how it is an act of glorifying God. And last week we talked about being on fire for God, how the fire that is in us is the fire of the Holy Spirit, and we have to keep it fanned, and we have to be contagious and light other people on fire. And today, we're going to talk about potato salad. <laughs> kind of. We're going to talk about potato salad. We're going to talk about being thankful even in the most challenging of situations in our life. So hear now God's holy and inspired word. It comes from Ephesians, Paul letter to the church of Ephesus, chapter 5, verses 15 through 21. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melodies to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. So we sang some really special songs this morning. They were songs that have been either on someone's heart or were sent to me that were meaningful to someone. And the praise team worked really hard and, and I was led to be able to sing and I hope that they were meaningful to you. And it really goes along with this scripture that Paul tells the church of Ephesus that that's one of the ways that we minister to one another is through music and it's a powerful, powerful tool for us to use. This morning's scripture is also, yet again, one of those times when Paul is preaching to the church and to us about being thankful. And he says to them, give thanks always in f and forever in everything to God. And he also says, don't fill yourself up with wine, but fill yourself up with the Holy Spirit. Paul seems to have this ongoing theme about being thankful always. And, and he goes back to fill yourself up with the Holy Spirit. Actually, this is before the Timothy letter. But he is consistent about that message about thanksgiving and gratitude and giving honor and glory to God. And with everything that Paul has been through in his life, you think that he would at least one time slip into one of these letters, that he's a little cranky with God, and you would think he would slip into one of these letters, it's okay to get mad at God one time, or at least a little, and say, seriously, Lord, cut me a break. But he never does that, never. I mean, I was in my car the other day, and the heat went out, before, in the, in the summer, when it's 99 degrees, the air went out. Then the heat went out. And I said, Lord, cut me some slack. And then I had to think about it, and I reflected on Paul, and I was at least a little grateful that I had a car. I was a lot grateful that I had a car. But Paul has been, he's been shipwrecked, he's been stoned, he's been robbed, he's been imprisoned, and the list goes on and on, and yet he always and forever still finds a reason to be thankful and encourages the church of Ephesus and Philippi and all of us to do the same thing. And I started thinking about it. If he would have at least said, often give thanks, or most of the time give thanks, it would probably be a whole lot more realistic for us it'd be a whole lot more doable, right? Right? You're in church, don't lie. It would be a whole lot more doable. But he says, 
It is important, it is imperative that we give thanks all the time for everything because God is worthy. But let's be honest, that keeping a smile on our face when we are struggling on the inside is exhausting. But the Greek word that Paul uses for always means always. Usually there's some leeway in things in, when we translate words, but there is no leeway in this. Always means always. In every situation, it means when we are struggling. It means when we are healthy. It means when we are sick. It means when our family is being nice. It means when our family is being horrible, which brings me to Thanksgiving and potato salad. Told you we were going to talk about potato salad. But I discovered before I get to the potato salad, that it is possible to count it all joy. It is possible to say yes. It is possible to be thankful always. And please don't think that I am spouting some kind of I have arrived Christian do doohickey because I'm not and I have not. I have just learned that it is possible to be thankful in the most difficult of situations. And I learned the lesson from my husband one Thanksgiving over potato salad. In my family, maybe it's true in your families, um, the, the old, I'm not old, but the older women, we all cook certain dishes. And the, the younger generation is getting older, and this was a few years ago. The younger generation is getting older, and we decided that it was their time to cook some of the dishes that we have been cooking, and because they've all got their own kids, and it's time to pass down some of the traditions. And so we did, and we get to Thanksgiving dinner, and they've all made their dishes, and we've made some of ours, and my, we have Thanksgiving dinner at my sister-in-law's house, and she lives in one of those... Um, split level houses, so some of the family eats Thanksgiving upstairs and some goes downstairs. Well, my husband filled up his plate and he went downstairs and all of a sudden, you hear my husband say, oh my Lord, who made the potato salad? <laughs> and everybody was laughing, except my niece who was sitting at the table next to me because she had made the potato salad. And then he, he just kept going. My wife did not make this potato salad because they usually made the potato salad. And she said, but I used your recipe. And I started to ask her what she put in it and she had made some mistakes along the way. And then he came upstairs and he looked at my niece's face and he was about to cry because she was about to cry. And he sat down at the table and he said, as he ate every single bite of that potato salad, but I am so thankful that you made this. And I am so grateful that you tried. I'm even more grateful it's going to be better the next time because you're going to try it at Christmas again. <laughs> and I'm even more grateful that your auntie has the recipe. And then when he got to the last bite, and thank God this is the last bite. <laughs> That's a true story. And she does make pretty good potato salad now. But really what I, I learned and we all learned out of that lesson is that things don't have to be good for us to be thankful for them. And situations don't always have to be perfect for us to find a reason to thank God for them in everything. Thankfulness recognizes that things don't have to be exactly how we want them to be in order for us to say thank you and amen. The act of thanksgiving helps us to deepen our trust in the goodness of God, and it helps us to be humble, and it helps us to be loving, no matter what the circumstances may be. And potato salad, it was a little funny, but there are circumstances in our lives that are much more terrible than terrible potato salad. Sometimes it means enduring a job loss or the death of someone we love, or struggling with paying the bills, or finding out the person that you trust the most has betrayed you, or the person that you love the most is talking about you, or the person that you love the most is a Christian who talks about you behind your back, or anything that you are going through that has broken your heart in a million ways. 
And it may seem impossible that any kind of goodness could come out of any of those situations. But when God is present, there is always good, and there is always a reason to be thankful. On our last wonderful Wednesday of the semester, which was last Wednesday, we packed boxes. And truth be told, it was a little chaotic, but we packed boxes, and the kids had fun. And the boxes were full of Thanksgiving food, and the kids made decorations to put on the top. And with the help of some agencies and some schools, we were able to match the boxes up with families who needed blessings for this season. And we were calling the families to make connections in order for us to deliver the boxes. And some of us have heard some really powerful stories about their needs. And these are some of the the stories we've heard so far. Thank you so much because we needed this so badly. And I didn't know what I was going to tell my kids when we didn't have a turkey, and I can't thank you enough. And this one came from the connection of the agency, and I didn't even know what to say with this, because she said this woman went in to, and it was an agency who had helped her get out of an abusive relationship and they had promised her a Thanksgiving dinner basket for her family. And she went to pick it up and it had outdated macaroni and cheese and cookies and Halloween candy in it, but nothing for Thanksgiving dinner. And she called and said, do you have an extra box? By any chance do you have an extra box? And we did. And the agency was so thankful for us being the hands and feet of Jesus. And then we also heard from a woman who said, my husband lost his job from Bank of America, and my job isn't enough to support the household. And this is such a a blessing. We used to be the family who blessed others. And now look at us. In each one of these situations, the recipients had found a reason to be thankful, and they're thankful because they're being loved, and they're thankful because they have a meal and they didn't expect to have it, and they're thankful because we cared. But truly, the bigger blessing is for us, because we have an opportunity to learn how much we have and how much we can give And also to recognize that these boxes are going to employed, unemployed, underemployed, single moms, teachers, families of eight, and from what I found out so far, a trailer, a hotel, a house with six bedrooms, a cancer patient, and the list goes on. And some of these are being delivered today and people will find out all different situations. Sometimes we judge. And that is really a lot of what this morning's scripture passage is about. Speak to each other in songs. Don't get filled up with the wrong thing so you can be filled up with the Holy Spirit. Don't get filled up with wine, yes, but don't get filled up with judgment. Don't get filled up with everything else that gets in the way of the Holy Spirit because there are people out there that need us and we need them. Speak to people in loving ways. The first year that we did this Thanksgiving dinner box thing, I grabbed a box and went to this big, beautiful house in Matthews. And I looked and went, wow, (laughs) I had a really big, beautiful house. And I went up and I rang the doorbell. And they cracked the door and this, this, they had a dog that was as big as a horse. And they invited me in and I said, no, thank you. (laughs) I was afraid of the dog. So the mom and dad stepped out and they had five kids. That was 10, they had five kids. And they stepped out and we started talking. We talked so long, we sat on the steps. And what I found out was, and I, there are things that you remember forever. And I found out that dad had transferred in his job and mom had quit her job to take care of their son who had cancer. And they had two younger kids that they were trying to shield from the whole situation. And the only thing they could keep saying to me was, 
I really hope you're not judging us for bringing this box because we're struggling and we're trying not to let our kids know and our family know. And I said, there's no judgment. But the whole way home, the, actually the whole way back to this church, I kept saying, I pulled in that driveway and said, wow, they got a really nice house. Their house is bigger than mine. I judge them. And you know what story I told them as I sat on their steps? I told them the story about the potato salad and how sometimes things that we want to be so good and we can't wait to try don't always turn out so good, but we still have a reason to be thankful for them. It may not be the person that you thought was going to make it, but sometimes it's the person who provides it that brings the blessing. And it was not my niece, truly, that provided that potato salad or me that provided the box or the church that truly provided the box. God provided the potato salad and God provided the box for that family and for my husband. Everything goes back to God. And that's why Paul preaches, always be thankful. Because he knows that everything that we have and everything that we are is because of God. Today in the 11 o'clock service, I have the honor and the privilege of baptizing two children and, an, and a child and a, and a toddler baby still. And so every time that something happens in your life, we need to remember our baptism and the time that God put a seal on our life and called us in to the life of the church and called us our own, called, called us his own. It is an amazing thing, but still in that moment, there are expectations on our life that change everything for us. Everything that we have, everything that we are, we need to be thankful for, even if it's hard and even if it's difficult. Now, I'll tell you the truth. My husband was a joker, so half of what he was saying was because he knew whoever made the potato salad was, was in for it if my husband tasted it. But when he saw it was his niece, it broke his heart a little bit. But God for, provides for us a bountiful harvest in life, and not everything that we get is good. But we have so much to celebrate. We have baptisms to celebrate and we have each other to celebrate, and we should do it with songs and joy and goodness and support each other in and out of season. Amen? Amen? My friends, it is my prayer that your Thanksgiving is full of a bountiful harvest. If the potato salad is horrible, sit down, take a bite, and thank the person who made it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We come to the point in our worship service to give back. Um, you can make a gift of your tithes and offerings in the um, vessel in the back of the room. Um, I would just recommend that you do so with a joyful and thankful heart. Um, I think sometimes giving hurts, but if you, if you really let Jesus lead you to give, it feels really good. things all different today. Are you ready to stand up and praise the Lord again? I'm going to say the benediction and they're going to get you wound up to stand up and praise the Lord. I don't know what your favorite thing is about Thanksgiving. My least favorite thing was to have to say the, the thankful prayer going around the table because it was so much pressure. Like, I thought I needed to be really thankful to my parents for things because I knew it was time for gifts to come. 
I didn't okay. know, but things changed. The closer I got to God, the easier it was for me to be thankful about things. So this year, as, as if that is a family tradition for you and you go around the table or, or in a circle and you say things to be thankful for, also say a prayer for those who don't know what to say and lift up a prayer for them because it's a hard season. It's hard for everybody. In this time, we should be thankful in and out of season for all things. We should remember that Thanksgiving truly is a verb. It's an action word, no matter what the dictionary tells you. And I pray that you remember that it is a Holy Spirit that is deep down inside your belly and that you fan the flame of that Holy Spirit so that when you go out into this world, you can light other people on fire. And when they see you, they say, hey, what is it that you have? And you can say, I have that kind of joy. If God is not an on-time God, I don't know what God is. And of all things, you can always and forever be the type of child of God who can bless people, even if it means sitting down on a front step and just listening, because sometimes that's all people need. And the incredible blessing that you give them is an ear, a hand, and the knowledge to know that God will work it out even if they don't think they can. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, May the sun shine warm upon your face, the winds blow gently upon your fields, and the rains fall soft. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. So we have been blessed, so let's go be a blessing. Happy Thanksgiving.